in Nathan Oakley's Flock of Sheep, there is one that has specialized in celestial navigation. And it is this nonsense that Oakley constantly repeats ad nauseum. That sheep calls himself Brian's logic. Here is an excerpt of his presentation on a, on a celestial navigation flat earth style. And a navigation angle. If I know the height, the exact height of the Eiffel Tower, and I take an angle to the Eiffel Tower, I can then determine my exact distance from the Eiffel Tower based on the angle I take, because I know the actual height. If I don't know the actual height of the Eiffel Tower, but I know my, my exact distance from the Eiffel Tower, uh, my exact distance, I can then, with my angle, determine the height of the Eiffel Tower without the distance. So I have to have the size to know the distance. The distance the size. Right? That's how it works. So if I always use it all the time, I'll use angles. I did it, this is the way, just totally do it many times. But that's how it works. But this is not an elevation angle. Your angle to the past is your elevation angle. When you're talking about celestial navigation, your angle up to a celestial body is your elevation angle. It requires a flat base line, and the opposite side of that triangle will be the zenith of the GP. But you're calculating for your as Peter earlier, your zenith. Uh, well. He is babbling a lot about not being able to calculate with the elevation angle, as if that is the main problem here. Then he goes on demonstrating that you cannot determine the distance to the GP of a star by trigonometry, because you don't know the height of the star nor the distance to the star. Yeah, your zenith angle. Right, because that's what's going to give. That's what's going to give you your distance, your zenith angle. That's what gives you your distance. You don't know what height this is, so you can't. And you don't know what distance you are from the GP. So you don't know what what's the height of the celestial body, and you don't know what distance you are from from the GP of the celestial body. So that's why you calculate for your for your comp, uh, for your depression angle, your zenith angle, which gives you a zenith distance, your core altitude distance. He is quite right. And most Globers have tried to argue that for a long time now. And then, without blinking his eyes, he comes up with the method to calculate the distance to the GP of a star having only a right triangle. And lo and behold, there comes the 60 nautical miles per degree. He shows a diagram and calculates the distance to the GP of a star using that formula. That distance in the case of an elevation angle of 17.10 degrees and a zenith angle of 72.9 degrees comes out to be 70.9 degrees times 60 nautical miles per degree equals 4374 nautical miles. Notice that the GP in that situation on his diagram is at minus 65. Then he moves the GP to a position at minus 460 and sees that the elevation angle has reduced to 2.49 degrees. Anyone can see that although the distance of minus 460 is around 7 times further away than the distance to minus 65, his zenith angle only is 1.2 times the value of, of minus 65. Maybe that's the reason why he implicitly claims that the 60 nautical miles per degree still works, but doesn't calculate the value. So I will do it for him. The zenith angle is 90 minus 2.49 degrees equals 87.52 degrees. So the distance to the GP is 87.52 times 60 equals 5,250.6 nautical miles. This is, as could be expected, 1.2 times as far as his first calculated distance to the GP. But as I said in his diagram, the distance of the second GP to the first is 460 divided by 65 equals 7 times as far. So at the very first step, he is a factor of almost 6 wrong. But he doesn't stop there. Now he places the GP to a position in the diagram at minus 1000. And again, he doesn't calculate the distance to the GP. According to his method of calculating, this distance would be 90 minus 1.15 times 60 equals 5331 nautical miles. The ratio between the third distance of minus 1000 and the first one of minus 65 equals 15.38, although the ratio between the calculated distance equals 1.2. This time he is a factor of almost 13 wrong. How come 
he can be so long. That's because he must be. The 60 miles per degree is a linear function. And in the right triangle, the favorite topic of the average fleur for nowadays, the ratio between the distance to the GP and the zenith angle is one following the trigonometric tangent function. Without realizing it, Brian's logic has rather convincingly demonstrated that celestial navigation doesn't work and cannot work on a flat earth. You cannot calculate the distance to the GP of a star using trigonometry because you don't know the height of the star. And you cannot calculate the distance to the GP of a star with the 60 nautical miles per degree formula because that formula cannot work on a flat plane. Everything he says after this demonstration about divergent zenith angles and that on a globe the distance to the GP should be measured in light years of which by the way he falsely states that they, those don't exist and that the speed of light never was measured are therefore moot. I couldn't be more confident. You will never get around it because it's impossible to get around. You will never ever 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 beat celestial navigation. It debunks that the world is a globe. Diverging zeniths do not work. Only parallel zeniths work. Right? You don't have 60 nautical miles per degree with diverging zeniths. You have hundreds of light years of the zenith distance. These are all cheap attempts to distract from the basic problem at hand. Celestial navigation cannot work on a flat earth.